Mind-centered action, or as I call it, mind-guided action, is the key to human flourishing. All of those things that the brain as an organ of homeostatic self-regulation can do aren't enough. Right? The neural systems, the brains, the consciousness of other creatures is sufficient for their survival and indeed for their flourishing, for reproductive success, for finding food, for creating shelter. Humans, you don't want to rely just on those automatic functions of your brain. You've actually got to assert conscious control of your brain to do any of the really important stuff that adds to the value of your life. So if the brain isn't the best thinking organ, it's probably because we're unable to survive via this auto-regulation. Thinking, however, thinking in the way that I mean slow, hard, effortful, consciously directed thought that in the end is uncertain. Right? Now, your, your homeostatic regulator, your brain, can screw up sometimes. It can over-secrete or under-secrete. It can raise your respiration too much. It can raise your heart rate not enough, et cetera. But generally speaking, its automatic responses to the situations are appropriate. Even if you're dysregulated because of some external stimulus or because of some internal pathology, it nevertheless is responding in the way that it's designed to respond. Thinking, however, is uncertain. You can mess up. You can think the wrong conclusions. You can come up with the wrong answers. And so you need to exert much more conscious control over how you do this. Now, thinking has to be deliberate and intentional, unlike what most of your brain does. And if you look at the real estate of the brain, right, how much tissue is there, how many neurons, axons, all the, the rest of the brain, very little of it is dedicated to this conscious thinking. You have to be very, very intentional about it. And it's driven by your value orientation. What are you actually seeking? Brains, as I said, in the absence of any kind of external uh, distortions or internal pathology, brains as automatic regulators are working in your interest. They're actually choosing the things. You know, they're not going to throw your, your blood chemistry off. They're not going to throw your hormonal regulation off in the absence of any kind of uh, bad stimulus or internal pathology. They're going to respond exactly how they should respond. Thinking? Man, people can screw up with their thinking and they can do all kinds of things that are incredibly bad for themselves. I mean, you don't need to, you know, when you guys fly out of here and you go to the airport, you can just look visually. A lot of the things people are doing consciously are really bad for them. So the reality is most people are pretty bad at the habit of actual conscious deliberate thought. Why? Well, because it's hard, it's effortful, it's uncertain. But it's also because, in a very fundamental way, this is not possible. You just say, okay, well, like, let my brain take care of all those other functions. Let me take care of the thinking. Everybody will be happy. I'm like in the driver's seat of this chariot that is my, you know, my body. I'm going to do all the thinking. But again, you can't. A good example of this is thinking about what happens when you go to a foreign country where you barely can get by in the language. Maybe you don't even really understand the language, but you at least know a few phrases so that you can order food and do things like this. And think about what kind of effort is required for you to do even the most basic tasks. You have to think through, what are, what are these foods? What am I about to order? What am I doing? Am I, am I following the proper uh, cultural protocol? Am I following the proper language protocol? And it becomes very, very difficult. And at a point when you're a tourist in a foreign country where you don't know the language, you don't really know the culture, you become exhausted a lot more easily, cognitively exhausted. It's hard work thinking through every step that you normally would just do automatically walking through any American city. And so that hard work ultimately can't be possible every day all the time. So we develop heuristics, we develop algorithms. Basically, we develop shortcuts to help us do the things that we do every day. And the problem is these shortcuts, these habits of thought or these ways of solving the same problem or the same kinds of situations over and over again can lead to a very, very characteristic error. The danger is when heuristics, habits of thought, become biases. They become ways that we actually short circuit the process of reasoning. So the best understanding of convention returning speaker from Austin, Texas.
2012. And actually, Anthony Johnson, the CEO of the 21 Convention, said it's one of his favorite speeches, uh, the, the Austin, Texas one. And let's hope this one is too. Eric Daniels, let's do it. All right. Thanks. All right, guys. Ho hopefully, hopefully you're fully caffeinated, ready to go. Uh, the two systems model. Okay, and this is basically what I'm talking about with the, the two ways that you can, forget about the auto-regulation of the brain. That's primarily what the brain's for. Once you start thinking, there's really two systems, he says, that you can think incredibly, incredibly distorting. So one of these is the illusion of precision. It had this result, and therefore it's going to apply to this group. Right? You see this all the time, and, and not the least of which is mice or you know, lab rats or whatever comparing to humans, but even different groups of humans with different ages, different profiles, etc. cetera. Businesses to great businesses published this book, claimed that he understood everything that the CEOs and leadership teams did to make them great, published the book, made lots of money, and guess what?